Hey gang, it's Paul with Stud Pack. Welcome back to our channel. Jordan and I are back here at our main remodel project and we are this close to putting paint on the walls. We can't wait to see what it looks like. We are super fired up to finally see some color on these walls. In fact, next week is paint week here at Stud Pack. We're gonna publish a series of videos on how we paint the entire inside of this house. We're gonna pull out our air to sprayer and paint the hundreds and hundreds of feet of trim in this house the window sills, the interior doors, and all the beams in the living room. Then we're gonna pull out our 18 inch wide paint roller. And if you've never used an 18 inch wide paint roller, it is a game changer. Even though it's only twice as wide as a standard nine inch roller that we're all used to, it is more than twice as fast. Then we're gonna show you a cut in trick with a paintbrush, no tape required. It's gonna give you a perfect cut in line. It is super easy and you're gonna have the best transition in the neighborhood. But this video is not about paint. In this video, we're gonna address a challenge that I got thrown that I have never had to deal with before. And that challenge was a big gap in the flooring that I had to cover with the baseboard. But you've covered gaps in the past. Why is this one different? Yeah, we did a whole video on it, right? Yeah. Well, this gap is an inch and a quarter. So you need a big old piece of quarter round or something to fill that. And that's exactly what they used before. We don't want that look in this house. Now let's talk about this parquet flooring real quick and get in front of all the comments. From this foyer where I am over, that's all original to the house from 1970. And it reminds the new owner of her mom who used to live here. So she wants to keep it because it reminds her of her mom. That's pretty cool. Now this parquet from my hand over was added later. I imagine all this was carpeted sometimes, but the new installers didn't cut it. They just put full squares and see the big gap they left. This is about an inch but back here, it's an inch and a quarter. So we came up with quite a few solutions on how to solve it. So let's head outside and show you what we came up with. So here's a sample of our baseboard we're using on the project. And here's a sample of the casing we're using on the project. So I wanted the baseboard I chose to do two things. Number one, it has to complement the casing. So those complement each other, right? Nice and simple. The other thing, and this is really important, your baseboard should be thinner than your casing. So you have a little reveal right here at the floor. You don't want it flush, that looks goofy. And you certainly don't want it thicker, that looks even worse. So in trying to find something like this, I went to four places. My first stop is always my local independently owned mill workshop. They didn't have any stock. They are really upset about that, they can't get material. My second stop was the brand new floor and decor, strike two. My third stop was the orange store, strike three. Then I went to the blue store and all I could find was this product right here on the ground. And I figured I can make that work. Now this is sold as baseboard. It's in a five pack, they call it a contractor's pack, five and a half inches wide, 12 feet long. So you get 60 linear feet and it was $68, but it's too tall for me. And this edge and this edge are rounded over. To me, a baseboard should be square that edge should be square when it's sitting on the floor. So I just figured, why can't I run this through my saw stop table saw, cut it in half, I double the amount of product I get, and the height is gonna be perfect for our project. So that's exactly what we did. So cutting that baseboard in half worked great. The end product looks complementary to the casing, which is what we wanted, and it's very economical. Just over 50 cents a linear foot. And that's huge these days if you ever priced baseboard, it's like right? back to normal. Yeah, that's right. So how are we gonna cover that gap? We're gonna get some big old quarter round. Just kidding, put away your pitchforks. We're not gonna use that at all. In previous videos we've done about trim carpentry, a lot of you have commented that you've actually used a different piece of molding here, not shoe, not quarter round, but maybe a piece of door stop, something a little more decorative to cover that gap. And that's exactly what I thought I could do. I could simply go back to the home center and find some wood that would work here. But of course I couldn't. And after looking all over those racks, up and down the aisles, I realized the solution is already at the job site. So here's what we came up with. We took a piece of the baseboard, cut a strip off, and glued and nailed it to the bottom. And that's what we're gonna use. Let's bring it inside and you'll see how sharp this looks. All right, look how cool this looks. We got this big old gap right here. And you can see these parquet installers, they just use full tile. They didn't cut this stuff at all, all the way around the room. But I'm gonna put that against the wall. And personally, I think that looks pretty sharp. And once you have furniture in here, I doubt anybody's gonna notice it. Mainly people like you and me, Jordan Wright, yep. and all our viewers will notice it. So what I did before I determined how wide this is, I went all around the room and I measured the biggest gap. So on this wall, that biggest gap is an inch and an eighth. On this wall, it's an inch and a quarter, seven eighths here, and it's different over there. But inch and a quarter was the biggest. And my first idea was, 
I'll put an inch and a quarter filler over here, seven eighths there. In other words, I'll vary the width of this according to the biggest gap on each wall. But then I realized I'm gonna have trouble in the corners. I could still make it work, but it would be a lot easier if it were all the same. So we're just gonna run this all around the room. Inch and a quarter, and this is two and three quarter. So now that we know what we need to build, let's head outside and build all the baseboard for this room. All right, let me walk you through the setup. I've got my miter box stand here, set up as my end feed table for this 12 footer. I'm gonna send it right through the table saw. My fence is set at that inch and a quarter we talked about. And I've got my very sophisticated brute out feed table over there. How much you pay for that? Uh, I don't remember, five bucks, nice. something like that. All right, let me get suited up and let's fabricate some custom base. how we're going to put the thing together. I've got both pieces here on my workstation. I'm going to use our glue first. Head on down here. Using my left hand, my finger as a guide. I'm going to apply glue right there. Need a longer workstation. Now it's time for some assembly. I've got some inch and a quarter, 18 gauge brads in my good old Porter Cable gun here. I'm going to flip this up, flush it out on my table and start nailing it together. One disadvantage of this type of nail is I'll probably hit one of those nails when I'm cutting it. That's just how things work out for me. A long time ago, I had to put an Olympic quality volleyball set in a gym floor. This thing was from Japan. I had to route through the maple floor, drill through the slab, and this was a 10,000 square foot room. The blueprint showed me that there were four conduits under that slab. One for the bells, one for the clock, one for the fire alarm, and one for the intercom. Of those four conduits, we found all four when we drilled through that floor. We drilled six four-inch holes in a 10,000 square foot slab, found all four conduits. I grazed one of them, we didn't damage the wire, and we found the other three while we were digging. So I know I'm gonna hit one of these nails. You know, they do make composite nail guns, Jordan, for those guys that have like CNC's and they put wood on there. Right. So the router bits won't hit the nails. Well, you don't even have, you, you're not even investing in cordless tools, so definitely yeah. not investing in composite you, nails. That's right. You're right. <laughs> cool. There's our first piece. And this is pretty cool. It's like installing base and shoe at the same time. And I love the way that, that looks. I know I'm probably going to get some comments about it, but I think it looks great given what the challenge was, right? So let's talk about a butt joint in our base in the middle of a run, because all we can get is 12 footers. I like to do a 45 just like that. Here's our stud as indicated by the magnet, and I put it right over the end of the stud. The next piece overlaps it. I don't nail this one. When I put this one on and nail it, it's gonna trap this one in place. Just one less nail to fill when you're painting, right? But I do like to glue them. Let me put a little glue on both sides of this MDF and we'll nail up this last piece on this wall. And I won't nail this corner until I get this piece fitted all together. All right, let's clean off this glue joint and start running some more base, bud. You wanna do that side or this side? Doesn't matter. All right, yeah, they're both the same. We got that end wall to wrap around. I needed to fully get you. <laughs> no, you two ain't you two been worth that. <laughs>
Okay. Alrighty guys, this side of the room is all done and it's looking fantastic. Now we want to point out a few things about this profile. Remember we said earlier, it's square because everything else in here is square. The edge on the countertop is square. It's picking up on this detail on the face frame and even the drawers. But if you wanted to, you could chamfer this edge like that and pick up on the chamfer on our face frame on the drawers. You could make this anything you wanted with a router bit and a router table. It's your project, do what looks good to you. And I already got a jump on the trim on this side, the street side of the house. Just a couple more pieces to run and then the trim and the entire house is all done. All right, we are gaining on it. We just have this little section to do and a few pieces over there and we are done with this trim. Now right here, you may have noticed, we took all the parquet flooring out right here. What happened, the little pieces by the door, they were completely rotten. So we removed those. Once we did that, we realized these three sections were all loose also. Check this out. These are coming right up. But for whatever reason, these are down pretty solid. Maybe they had some water get in that old doorway. Who knows? But what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave this line here and the owners decided to put tile there. These are two samples. She's gonna pick the one we like, then we're gonna order them, come back later and put our tile right under the base. Speaking of the base, these four pieces, one, two, three, four, they're already cut, but we haven't nailed anything yet because we like to fit it up first. Check it out right here. This piece of molding is parallel to our parquet flooring, but you notice I have a little gap here. That's because the end of the wall is not square. I'd rather all of this be perfectly square, 90 degrees, than do this and have off angles here, and now I'm not parallel to my flooring. So we're gonna glue and pin this one together, nail this section in place, fit up this corner, and then just a few more pieces behind Jordan, and we're done with the trim. You ready, bud? Do it. Let's get this one nailed off. All right, cool, we just have these two pieces left on this wall, one by the door and this long piece. But I am out of our custom-made base. I have a piece of this, but I am completely out of that. Let's head outside and we're gonna custom make one of these instead of driving all the way to the store for one piece of lumber. downtown <laughs> need my safety glasses when you're throwing <laughs> and with that last piece of base in the foyer all the interior trim on this project is done that's a huge box. We can put a big green check mark in and move on to painting this project. So if you have a big gap around your like button, like we had around this parquet flooring, head on down to your workshop, make yourself a custom piece of trim, 
put it on your like button, smash it for us, ask a question, drop us a comment, please subscribe, and we'll see you on our next Stud Pack video.